Hi everyone, I'm Ji Tao, and my research topic is unlocking the potential of cap and trade program for mitigating non um, carbon dioxide greenhouse gas emission in China. Here's the contents today. First, I'll introduce climate change and non carbon dioxide greenhouse gases, and also the cap and trade program. And also, I'll analyze California's and China's cap and trade program. And finally, I will have some policies, discussion, and suggestions for China's cap and trade program. So, as we all know, um, climate change has become one of the greatest challenge and threat to human development. And the Earth's um, average surface temperature has increased by a, a, approximately 1.1 degrees Celsius since the um, late 19th century, as we can see in the chart. And this is a quote from IPCC Climate Change 2021. It is an equivocal that human influence has warmed the atmosphere, ocean, and land. Widespread and rapid changes in that um, atmosphere, ocean, cryosphere, and biosphere have occurred. Um, so climate change is primarily caused by accumulation of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. So these gases trap heat from the sun and prevent it from escape back, back to the space so as to gradually um, heat the Earth's surface temperature. And among all those greenhouse gases, um, carbon dioxide is, has been put greatest um, emphasis because of its huge um, quantitives relative to those non-carbon dioxide greenhouse gases. So approximately um, from all those greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide stands for about seven, 75%, and the remaining 25% is um, such as methane and nitrous oxide. But researchers um, have figured out that um, those non-CO2 greenhouse gases have a higher global warming potential um, compared to carbon dioxide, and those ca um, capacity to cap heat can be um, measured by GWP, uh, which means global warming potential, as we can see in the chart, that um, non-CO2 greenhouse gases have a more, have a larger uh, GWP compared to carbon dioxide, which means they're more effective at capping heat. Um, this map showed um, countries with the largest emissions till 2013 as 30. As we can see, the first and second is China and United States. And according to some studies, China is responsible for approximately 30% of global non-CO2 greenhouse gases emission. And um, study have also shown, seen the substantial mitigation potential for um, then CO2 greenhouse gases for um, China and United States. And um, especially the countries with the largest um, baseline emission would have the largest mitigation potential as well. So um, this graph shows the marginal abatement cost curves till 2030 of China and United States. So we can see that the both countries can uh, mitigate non CO2 greenhouse gases at a very low cost. So how to mitigate non-CO2 greenhouse gases? And cap and trade program is one of the most important measures to do that. And um, so to introduce that, cap and trade program is a um, market-based approach to mitigate greenhouse emission. So basically the program, the government set uh, limits, so as a cap for the total greenhouse gas emission for every, um, for, for all the entities and they give each entity's allowance so as the right to um, emit greenhouse gases based on their um, like uh, productivity and so um, though some entities are able to emit smaller quantities of greenhouse gases um, compared to the allowance so they're able to sell the remaining allowance to other entity that need it in the carbon dial, uh, carbon market, so as cap and trade program can act as a um, economic an incentive for all the entities to develop um, technology to mitigate their um, greenhouse gases emission. So, cap and trade program is also one of the California's measures to mitigate greenhouse gases, and it has seen 
a um, huge success. So 100 of companies in cap and trade program meet 2020 co compliance obligation. And according to the California Air Resources Board, the, uh, the program has helped to reduce nitro oxide emission from large stationary sources by more than 80% since its launch. And this is China's cap and trade program timeline. As we can see, um, in 2013, the ETS uh, pilots started in um, several regions like Shanghai and Shenzhen. And 2017, the national ETS has announced, and 2018, the national ETS infrastructure construction is complete. But it is not until 2021 um, that the um, national ETS um, officially launched. And but it, this national ETS program only covers carbon dioxide emission from the power sector, sector alone. Um, so as, they uh, as discussed earlier, the inclusion of non-CO2 um, greenhouse gases in cap and trade program has the potential to significantly increase the program's overall effectiveness in reducing the whole um, greenhouse emission. Um, so I have some policy suggestions for China. First of all, um, I think it should expand the cap and trade program to include non-CO2 um, um, greenhouse gases. Um, for example, the cement industry should be given um, both the um, carbon dioxide and non-carbon dioxide greenhouse gases um, target. And secondly, China should also develop and implement a policy for determining and distributing allowance. And this um, policy should be based on a comprehensive assessment of emission from different sector and should also be considering factors such as economic growth, industry structure, and et cetera. And finally, China should establish a comprehensive GHG reporting and accounting system. So this system is um, equivalent to California's GHG, GHG reporting program, um, which means the regulations of mandatory reporting of greenhouse gases emission by certain facility and entities. Um, nowadays, China still lacks a national reporting and accounting system, but only have regional ones in Shanghai and Shenzhen, etc. So um, this is urgent that China should develop a efficient accounting method for more key products and industries at the national levels. Um, in conclusion, Shanghai's cap and trade program is still in its infancy stage and there's much to do. And California is a great model to study. Here's my reference and thank you all. Any questions? What do you think the future for the California program will be? Like, is it? Is it a, I, this is just something I don't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. Is it going to just stay as is? Is it going mm -hmm. to grow? Could it be, do you see any ways it could be made better? Um, California's cap and trade program is um, the, the one of the biggest program um, in the whole world as well as in the United States. And I know that Chicago have a former cap and trade um, cap carbon market before, but it closed several years ago because of the low transaction action. Um, but I can see there's a there's a huge potential and um, potential transaction in California because of the um, huge economic activities. So I think its future is quite bright, and um, we can see the increase transaction activity in this program. So I think I have many confidence in it. Do, who is, are companies required to participate? Is it all like, or how does that work? Or is it voluntary or is it all utility companies or? Um, there are some um, entities are required to participate in it and some of the others are um, optional. So um, it based on their um, product production level. I yeah. see. So yeah. that's how they would be asked to participate. Yeah, that. and the limits, the cap will um, fall down um, um, years after years. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah so. right. It goes down over time, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Um, 
Thanks. Um, I really enjoyed it because uh, I had an economy class and we talked about that. Um, I just have a question because we uh, often compare uh, cap and trade programs to carbon taxes. Mm. Uh, and in a lot of countries in Europe, it's like more like car carbon tax. Mm. Uh, do you think it's better to have a cap and trade for non GHG, for non CO2 GHG uh, emissions, or carbon tax could be could yeah. work too? Yeah, I know some of the countries as well as regions in um, you, um, the U.S. They have like nitrous oxide tax as well as other non um, carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases tax. Uh, I think there's a this tax and the, the cap and trade program is different track to uh, mitigate the overall greenhouse gases. And the tax is more um, obligational and the cap and trade program is a market um, incentive. So I think they add different roles to mitigate the greenhouse gases. And yeah, um, there's discussion of uh, whether we should choose or we should um, continue both. And it looks like the conclusion is that they have they have both pros and cons, and the cap and trade program seems like a, um, um, a, a have a bright future to explore. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much.